Let's talk about something that I think is very prevalent right now in society, which is the good and evil battle that it's been happening for a long time and it seems like it's never going to end. And the truth is that it will never end. So might as well get to this and try to transcend it. And that's the point of this. So I want to make this video as short as possible, but I want to put as much um, content as I can to make it to make it a point, to make it see, um, make you see, you know, what the, the truth of evil is. And so I'm going to give you six steps to do that. And for that, I, I'll, I actually need to give you a little definition about evil. And I say little because at the end, I'll give you the end or the, um, the last part of the definition and it's going to make more sense. So I need to start with at least the first part of the definition, which is evil is just a polarity because everything is po it's polarity here. We live in a dual system and it's a moral polarity, which means that we use evil as a way to measure ourselves into what we would like to be or not be we would like to do or not do or just anything that has to uh, define ourselves in terms of evil just like anything else in polarities there are polar opposites and that's why we want to be good always and we don't want to be evil because evil is just that however there's no way to say what's good and evil that's the biggest problem that uh, a lot of people have written down rules and laws and commandments and things that say this is evil and this is good, you have to do this. That is an infringement upon free will. So as you can see, there is no such thing as evil, such thing as a concept or an idea of what evil is. There is just the loose interpretation of our minds of what is good and bad, simple as that. And that is just one of the features that we have in humanity. So with that, before we get into the six steps and we go into a journey, we have to create a hero and an, and an evil um, or a villain, actually. So the hero is going to be you. OK, so that's going to be you. Happy guy who is good. And then for the evil character, we're just going to create another person that um, just to differentiate it from you, unless you wear glasses, but let's just Put some glasses on him. I don't. I don't know how to draw, so I don't know. Forgive my drawing, but that's um, that's the evil guy. Glasses, and because we're in technology era, we're gonna say that this guy is. Um, I don't know. It's uh, it's it's good with technology, and it's good with you know science and all this stuff. And we're also going to um, say that this guy, you know, his. His motive for being evil is that he wants to create this, uh, just like a like in a superhero movie, he's going to create some substance that it's going to go into uh, people, like when they poison the water and so on. But this guy is just gonna invent something that people are wanna get. So any <laughs> um, anything that you see similar to reality here, uh, I don't know what you're looking at, but in any case. This is the evil man, okay? And this is you. And you, uh, you can't stand this person, okay? That's, that's the beginning of the journey that we're gonna do. So this is your measure. You know, this guy is going to put you to the test. It's going to define you. Now, the first reaction that we have when we perceive evil in the world is that we're going to fight it. You know, it's our instinct to simply go against it. So in nature, if we see a predator or a dangerous animal, that's evil to us. That's why we associate evil with um, dangerous animals, because we have that inherently in us. You know, it could be a snake, it could be uh, a lion, or a lion could be a, a fiend. You know, a lion is it's kind of a mixture for us. So perceptively, it's almost like I don't know, <laughs> but it's always, you know, this fiend that's going to eat you. It's never, you know, a panda bear 
you know, or I don't know, um, whatever, whatever you find beautiful in nature. Maybe a panda bear can be dangerous, who knows. In any case, so our in instinct is always to uh, find, you know, some, uh, it's our primitive reaction to it. It's to fight it. It's to go against it and um, it's survival. So in the first step, we're going to talk about feeling the emotion of uh, attack and that is our our first I actually have a couple of notes here that I want to use and my computer just keeps moving um, so we're going to react and attack is what I wanted to say so let's just go back to this this is our first react and attack. So this is natural that will happen for us whenever we're facing evil. In this, again, it's an exercise for the mind. So in the first step, you're going to explore that reaction and attack that you're going to, to feel. It's gonna just come out of you. And in your mind, you're gonna see yourself trying to, uh, you're reacting to this person and attacking this person. And I know we have been told that we shouldn't think about this, that we shouldn't be this way, but I want you to. I want you to do it in your mind. Nothing, nobody's gonna get hurt, <laughs> not even yourself. In fact, I guarantee you're gonna feel better afterwards. Um, so do it in your mind until it just feels like you're you're not doing um, anything that it it loses its purpose to use this primitive instinct of reaction or reacting and attacking and um, after that you're just gonna feel like okay I don't want to attack the person anymore I don't want to uh, react I don't react anymore so I don't want to attack him anymore and so uh, but your notion of this person even though you don't want to attack it and kill him or do anything to him, is going to be rejection. You're going to reject the, um, the, the person for what he does. And you're going to want to um, impart some sort of judgment. You're going to feel that you judge this person for what it's doing and um, it, it's just, it doesn't align with who you are, you know, and you're feeling yourself that now you know that you're calm and you don't want to attack him you're feeling yourself the separation you don't want to be around this guy you don't want to do uh, have anything to do with this guy and so the second step would be to explore so that's not one again that's two second step would be to explore um reject and judge. So in rejection and judging, you're going to see that you don't feel part of this person, but you're still going to be against it in terms of uh, mental uh, conversations and mental associations. And you know, even though you, want, you don't want to be in the physical anymore, you're just doing it in your mind and you're feeling separation from this individual and so on. That's fine again, you know, people say, don't do that, don't judge. Judge all you want until it feels like it's silly to judge again. And this is going to bring you to the next level. But that's what you wanna do, you wanna explore this. You want to explore the rejection that you feel with this individual. Why, I mean, who I am and what makes me who I am and this person and so on. So after you do that, you're gonna to go to the next step, which I have as, which is really important, choose and become. Because now you're getting into the silliness of rejecting this person and judging it. Even though you don't accept them yet, okay, you still feel like now you understand yourself more. Now you see who you are more. And you can, you see through the rejection and judgment that you have defined yourself and have given even more definitions to this person. 
So now you can see that you can choose who you are. That's your choice to uh, select what, what you are. You're putting now your, your real armor of who you are. And becoming is just simply becoming that individual um, that you are, thanks to the, uh, the conflict that has been generated here through the rejection and through um, the uh, disassociation that you have with this, with this evil person and its acts. So that will finish defining you as an individual. It'll finish creating you as a person. But it doesn't stop there. And you shouldn't stop there, okay? Um, this is where I would say most people can get, and it's, it's, it's pretty good enough, I would say, but there's more to do. And the next step, fourth, would be to accept. Accepting is a, an activity that simply comes about when you realize that who you are, everything that has defined you, is based on a certain principle that is very accepting of yourself. And you start realizing that um, this individual here would want to um, you know, be accepted in the same uh, principles as you, but he's doing something wrong still. He's doing something evil. And you wish you could bring this person to your uh, level of understanding, your level of, of perception of how things are. So you are in a place of acceptance and gratitude as well, you know, for being, you know, that person. And you realize that that person is simply um, misguided or whatever the case may be. You realize why this person was, was doing this. So you wish this person could be like you and you still want to change uh, the world. You, ch you still want to change this person, but that doesn't stop there. So um, once you get there, the next step would be to realize that it is not your job to change anybody. It is not your position to, just like their position, it's not the same to change you. It's You're there to define each other. And after that, you're gonna get to the next step, which is going to be understanding. So now you understand their position and you realize that there's nothing you can do for them but just accept them for who they are. That's all you can do. This is the level of wisdom that you're going to achieve as you know that you simply are and that this other person simply is. So you can see this by simply knowing that each individual is playing their own role in life and you can now begin to see them as separate individuals, all playing a different um, tone poem, as Ra likes to call it, an instrument of music in animating the whole orchestra, right? So that is the fifth step that you want to, um, you want to see in yourself. This is not something, I'll make a, an emphasis at the end of this, um, but, I've, this step is crucial for you to understand that there is nothing you could have done in the past to change this. You're understanding that each one of us have our own sovereignty in terms of who we are. And finally, the sixth step would be to assimilate. That's the word, assimilation. So by assimilating, this whole process, you're realizing that there was never any good or bad. You finally understand that this person is needed all the way in your process up until here, which where you create understanding. And for you to define who you are, to get where you are. So assimilation is to know that this person is you in disguise. It is you in the opposite of how you can see is your mirror so you can see yourself 
and it is not yourself directly in the terms of you know um, physical reality or the illusion of reality but it is you and so assimilation is the merging is the unity that becomes in your mind again this is all an exercise for the mind and you can assimilate the uh, the person you can um, you can perceive finally the um, sameness that you are and with this uh, with this person and these are the six steps that naturally will happen now the caveat that I wanted to say here is that this is easily understandable by the intellect and that's not what I want to tell you I don't want you to understand this intellectually I want you to live it and that's why everybody has their own way of living all of these steps because we need to actually experience it and live it it's okay to be stuck here or here or here or whatever that's where you are at that point and you need to keep exploring keep experiencing it may take you days weeks and this is uh, months years whatever it doesn't matter as long as you see yourself not restricting and um, repressing your emotions and what you feel now a neat thing that if you're perceptive you realize what I did here but I'm just going to color it for you so you can also see what I did if you didn't in the first step you know what this red means you already pictured I know you did you're smart the second step goes with this color third and I know I know you picked it up but I need to do it just leave it nice and complete this makes me feel better finally which actually is not finally this is the sixth step but we were talking about transcending so the seventh step would be this transcending evil so you can see what I did here and this is exactly what happens in our energy centers or chakras if we allow our consciousness to be explored in this way that's how we transcend evil six steps easy but you have to allow yourself to explore it this will happen with people like this guy which I don't know if you have an idea <laughs> or it could happen you know with your neighbor or your boss or anybody else you know you can just see that play in your life and you will be transcending evil as you get to the point of assimilation which is really merging of these concepts and really merging of this the lightness and sameness of the two of you because you need that mirror all right the last definition or the last part of the definition that I wanted to talk about evil is that you see now you can understand that evil even though it's something that is an activity for us to um, to create this understanding of who we are our um, experience of defining ourselves and realizing um, just everything in our lives you see that there is a natural need for evil there is a natural it, you cannot get away from evil and that is the biggest realization but to do that you have to go through this process to get here because the reason why I didn't start from here is because it's easier to relate to the first feeling that we get but now that we have done this trip now you can see from here everything you can understand from here and once you wake up this is why what waking up means in reality and um, in your mind the awakening happens when you realize that everything ends up here everything doesn't end up here it starts from here and it's a cycle so if we can start seeing the world a lot more from here by understanding that this is just the merging of polarities that there is no more polarity this is why we call unity everything is one so this help us 
understand that evil is simply something that is needed for us to have something. And if you substitute evil for up or down and you're up and, you know, cold and, and warm and any other polarity, which could be physical, could be mental, could be ethical, etc. You will see that all of them are needed and they're secretly one. That's the key thing that they're secretly one. So that is the definition of evil. That is the final definition of evil. If you're perceptive, you realize that the first part of the definition of evil that I gave was the one that goes all the way to third density consciousness, which is simply knowing that um, we needed to identify ourselves. And afterwards, in the rest um, of the steps, you know that this is all about assimilating or merging the two ideas of good and evil. So I hope this makes sense as usual. Uh, I was thinking about this this morning and I said, I need to share this because this is, this is just another way to see our world of polarities. And it's not about evil only, it's about anything else that you can put it into polarity that you know that is that has polar opposites and you can experience it this way. And maybe the words may be different but in the end, they all mean the same. Forget about semantics and the words. It's all about how you feel. The feeling that you have here, it's always going to be the same in any sort of scenario. The feeling you're gonna have here in any sort of scenario is going to be the same. So it doesn't really matter. That's it, that's all I got for today. Hopefully it was a short video. I'm not tracking minutes and I'll see you in the next one.